Access to keyframe editor and curves editor in the cut page. Hey, and welcome to this video. In this video, I wanna talk about the new update for DaVinci Resolve here on the iPad 20.1. And this is a massive one. This is a massive one and a update that I didn't expect. I have to be honest, I have a smile on my face since now the update came out because we got a couple of features that wasn't working on the iPad since DaVinci Resolve 20 came to the iPad. I made this huge update video. If you haven't watched that one, I will link this one up here. But basically this was the first time that it felt like a downgrade. While we got all of these amazing AI tools, the keyframe editor that was new in DaVinci Resolve 20 and that works on the desktop wasn't working on the iPad. Now with 20.1, almost a month later, we got now also the keyframe editor working and for the very first time, so if we come here to DaVinci Resolve on the App Store, you can always see what is new if you click on this one here, then you see the version history and if you click here more, you see all the updates that we now got here with 20.1. In this video, I will highlight the most important. The first one, support for the deliver page. That means, if I read this correct, correct me in the comments, but if I read this correct, now we have the third official launched page. So DaVinci Resolve, two years ago, when it came to the iPad, it officially launched with the cut page, that's this cut page here, and the color page. And of course, that still happens on the iPad. If you click this and you click too much here to this, too close to this white border, you go out. Anyway, color page. These are the two officially launched pages. But you see here on my iPad, I also have all of the other pages, the media page, the edit page, again, the edit page, <laughs> the fusion page, Fairlight page, and so on and so on. And now we finally have the deliver page, which is basically a page where you can now render your videos out. And there's different settings, more advanced settings to render your videos. You have always a preset here that you can select that's basically something that they optimized and then you can select here I will not go over all of those here in the video but when you work on the desktop you always had the deliver page that doesn't mean that you don't have to do it the old way because in any page here in the cut page for example I can always click here on top this is the fast export the quick export and I can always just select some codec here and then render out my video but if you want more freedom about how your final product how your final video should look like now you can come to the deliver page and a little spoiler, of course we had these pages before, it was just to open them, but it wasn't officially launched. Some of these other pages, like for example, the edit page again, <laughs> or the fusion page again, what is happening? I'm too excited. The Fusion page, for example, had like the biggest bucks still. And I think Blackmagic wants to, when they officially launch a page, they want to make sure that the most, I guess, everything is actually working. So now we have the deliver page. Okay, that's number one. The first time since it came to the iPad, now we have three pages. We are getting more and more to the desktop version because in the core, DaVinci Resolve is the same. Like today, this is just two hours old. Like this update came because I opened it on the Mac and then I saw it, whoa, I went to the iPad and I immediately had the update here as well. Amazing. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Access to the keyframe and the curves editor in the cut page. Okay, so with DaVinci Resolve 20 when it came, we didn't have this icon here on the top. So if you are here in the cut page, you have all these little icons here. Basically the first one is your media pool. Then if you work with multicam edits, you can have here the sync bin. Then you have your transitions, you have all of your titles, you have all of your effects. And now the last one, that is the so-called keyframe editor and the curves editor. So. In the past, we had something that was called Retime Curve, Retime Control, and it wasn't really available in the cut page. You had to come to the edit page. This method doesn't work at all anymore. They replaced that now with this modernized, better way of making keyframes. So what can we do with something like this? I will give you just a simple overview over this because I will make a dedicated video showing you how to use the keyframe editor proper because there's lots of stuff that is actually working in here. and. Little spoiler, if you work on the edit page, even if they write it's now supported on the cut page, we also have the keyframe editor now on the edit page as well. And what I like about the edit page here again is something that works on the desktop as well. I can make this one here bigger. So if I have a lot of different frames and everything, lots of different curves, I can now see this in big. That doesn't work on the cut page. So in the cut page, you have this little window here. If you see this icon here highlighted, that's your keyframes. And here, if you activate this one, these are your parameters. If you don't see anything in here, what you can do is you can, number one, either come here, display all video parameters, 
then you see all of the video parameters that you have. So and you can change each of them. And how does it work? So for example, if I now come here to my timeline, I have one clip in this one here. Let's say for example, I want to change the zoom value. What you normally would do here in the inspector, right? And you can still do this, this still works. I could, for example, come in here, make a keyframe here, and then for example, come to this position and zoom all the way in. And now this is already keyframes. So this is how I would change everything in the inspector the old way. So if I use now the keyframe editor, you will see now here that on the first position for the zoom value, we have this keyframe and on the second position, this one. If you want to zoom in here a little bit more, you can click on this icon here, right click, and then you have a little handlebar here and you can zoom out and in. Detailed zoom for a close up or full extended zoom, then you see your two keyframes and you can always with these arrow keys here, jump in between. So if I undo all of this, what we just did, I can do the same what I did here in the inspector also here. I can come in here to this position and now, for example, here on the zoom value, click on this one. Now I have the keyframe here. And then for example, come here to this position, click on this one. And to change now my zoom value, what I can do to not open the inspector, I can, for example, open this one here and come into this. If I open this one, I can also now zoom in like this. So to be fair, for something simple like this, I probably will still do the old way just here with the zoom values. It's just easier. But there's one more thing now. We have a curves editor. This is the keyframes. If we click on this one, now we open the curves. And for all of the keyframes that we set, we see now here the curve. To get a little bit more real estate, I can now actually deactivate here all the parameters. I see this one. So here, this is, for example, the curve for the zoom in. So if I want to, for example, make it more smooth, what I now can do is I can click on one of these points, here the blue one, right click. So if you use a pencil, just longer press and make sure that here in the selection mode, you're not at add keyframe or hand mode. Hand mode is basically just moving around. Come here to the pointer mode. Now I can select this keyframe, right click, so longer press, and then this one opens. You can either right click or you can select a keyframe. And that's basically the same here in this, if you right click this one, you can select one of these. For example, here ease in and ease out. So now I have a curve for that one with a handle and I can change the curve however I like it. And I can do the same for the out point. So my finished end point when I zoom in, change the key points here like this, zoom in and out, and I can change that curve as well. And so what it does now, if I come back in here and I look at what I just created, my whole transition, the zooming in is now way more smoother. That is what you can do now here in the curves editor. And a little side tip, because the window is very, very limited. You can work like this. I would always like work with the parameters, then close the parameters that you don't need, work on your curves, finish those curves. You can zoom in, move around here. But if you want a little bit more real estate, and that brings us to the next big thing that is now also on the iPad. With DaVinci Resolve 20, they changed now here on the top, you can very fast go in between horizontal landscape videos and vertical videos for shorts, Instagrams, TikToks and stuff like that. So if I come here to portrait and I now activate this button here, that was not working before. Now it's actually working with 20.1. So now my whole UI is more optimized for shorts. And that gives me a little bit more real estate here, even in the cut page. So even if you don't want to make a shorts video, just to work on the curves, you could now work in the curves, have a little bit more real, real estate here in the cut page, and then just later come back in here out of this and then click on this one again, full HD back, and then you're back to your normal thing. So this is one way how you can get a little more real estate. And if you want to see even more, you can come to the edit page and again. And then here, for example, if you work in the, in the keyframes editor, you can click on this icon and this will expand this to a new window. I haven't tested this yet. If you have a second screen, let's see if you can actually move this to a second screen and then work on your curves with a mouse or something. Of course, you can't use a touch screen then, but with, if you use your uh, cursor or mouse or Bluetooth mouse, then you could use this. And I can imagine with iPad OS 26, when this one comes to iPad, it will work even better. So with this one, you see even more. Here you see even the slider and everything. And at the same time, you see your keyframes here on the bottom as well. So have fun with this one, play around with this. And I want to say thank you to Blackmagic because I think there was a lot of people here in the community who were very like 
I want to say it honest, pissed, <laughs> because I think it's amazing that we move forward with new tools and the keyframe editor will be a better tool how it was in the past. Because it, to be fair, the retime curve, the old way of doing it, wasn't the smoothest way. And on the iPad, it was even more buggy and it was only working in the edit page, which is still not officially launched, right? And now having this in the cut page and a editor that actually works, this is amazing. So people were pissed because that tool wasn't there and they took the old tool so you couldn't do speed ramps and anything like this anymore. And now it is, this is amazing. I think there was a comment like maybe a I don't know, last week, I got a comment here on my YouTube channel, a guy like, oh, we still don't have the keyframe editor. DaVinci Resolve or Blackmagic Design doesn't even care about the users on the iPad. Now I can say, come on guys, we get so many updates, so many tools. Every like every month there's an update about DaVinci Resolve and they even listen. Now we have the keyframe editor working. This program, DaVinci Resolve for the iPad, becomes better and better and better. And I can tell because since the, it came to the iPad, I documented it. There are so many features and functions that you can do in DaVinci Resolve. This is just amazing. As a comparison, an app that you have to pay as a subscription because the most of these features are free. You can use the keyframe editor in the free version. It's not a studio version. Final Cut Pro. <laughs> What do they do? Apple. They have like two or maybe one update a year, even now here for the iPad. I'm still waiting for another iPad update for Final Cut Pro. Don't get me wrong, you can get some stuff done with Final Cut Pro on the iPad, but this is not the same level like Blackmagic Design is playing with us. I'm not playing, like doing it. They do business, they work with us. This is just amazing. So thank you so much Blackmagic Design for bringing this to the iPad, even if it feels that the community in the iPad is maybe a little bit more limited, more smaller than, than the other ones. But I think I want to hold the flag for us. I think what we are doing here with the iPad, even if it's a smaller device and sometimes it's more fun to work on a desktop and with big screens, I get it. But I think this is the tier, the forefront of the future. At one day, we will not have the separation of a laptop and a tablet anymore. Now I think Blackmagic is doing the right way. They develop it at the same time for both devices. So whatever happens in the future, that's actually so smart from them. I have to really tell you, this is so smart. No other company is doing it. They are doing it. And we who play around with the iPad do some videos. And I can tell you most of my videos here on my YouTube channel and in my masterclass about DaVinci Resolve beginner to pro are made on the iPad with DaVinci Resolve. And I don't have the newest one. I still have my M1 11 inch iPad Pro. And now playing around with the keyframe editor is it's fun. It's cool that we have these kind of tools on an iPad. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of ranting today. I will not go all over the list of all of these features because there's a lot of updates in. Look into it, play around with this. The biggest changes is now the keyframe editor. Have fun with this. And there will be a dedicated video about how to do now speed ramps and everything, how I will do it now with the iPad and look forward for that video. That will replace my old video because I have a video here about speed ramping on my YouTube channel that obviously became now obsolete. Anyway. I hope you learned something. I hope you are also excited like me. Let me know in the comments. And thank you again, Blackmagic Design. And we see us in the next video. I'm Daniel. Bye.